Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm at my friend's house in San Juan. I had to pick up some people from the airport, but today I got a DM from somebody and they were pretty stoked on their eating challenge. I actually forgot about their DM. They asked me some questions and I told them I'd get back to them. I forgot about it. You're a slacker. And they were persistent and they said, ping, hey, you might have forgotten, but here's another notification. So I'm gonna answer these questions. Um, I'm gonna do them one at a time, uh, kind of off the cuff. I didn't really read them in advance, um, but I think that's gonna give you the best perspective on where I stand for the different things. So I'm gonna start with, uh, start with number one. All right, question one is, how has a failure or apparent failure set you up for future success? Do you have a favorite failure? Yeah, this is tough. Um, I have a lot of failures. Um, I actually hate losing. I hate losing more than I love winning. I mean, I love winning, but I hate losing. I, I can't stand it. I'm so competitive. I think that uh, big failures have been learning experiences. And I was talking to somebody um, last night at a Super Bowl party I was at about this. and. One of the things that I said is that I've realized uh, one failure I've made is in uh, certain investments that I've made, uh, selling the entire investment. And uh, so for example, I bought Apple stock at uh, $425 and then I, I bought another 10,000 at uh, $398, uh, about its lowest point. And, uh, and then it shot up to the high sixes, um, high $600 mark, and I sold everything. And I shouldn't have. Uh, what I should have done is taken my money off the table and maybe sold and, and kept some profit. But I should have kept five or ten percent of that investment because the next week it went, it split and went to, uh, a, you know, it's a seven to one split and it went to um, one hundred and seven or one hundred fifteen dollars or something. I don't remember, but anyway, it would have increased my sh my uh, my earnings per original share purchased by over a hundred bucks. I think having a lot of little failures has helped me learn that I really don't know what I don't know and that um, I need a systematic way to think and process things because I am not naturally a systematic person. I'm naturally an intuitive, go get it, hard charging person. So I think that's really helped me. I think um, other failures, I failed a lot. Um, I had a business deal where I think I could have saved or made a couple hundred thousand more bucks uh, if I would have simply read a contract um, better or paid an attorney to read it or just had my assistant who's much more detail oriented than I am read it and it cost me a couple hundred grand. Jerry, you know I don't know what none of this legal shit mean. I've learned I'm not detail oriented, that's a failure. Um, I think one of my biggest failures is uh, I started a real estate investment fund at one point and we had a couple little funds and it did really, really well for a number of years. We expanded way too fast and way too big and um, and it's a failure that I'm still having on a day-to-day -day basis. I still have four or five properties that I'm trying to get out of. And I think what those failures and things have taught me is, you know, overall, it's allowed me to step back and say, hey, I, I really don't know a lot. And I really need to focus on the very small number of things I know and, um, you know, take calculated risks and probably not look at everything, you know, with, with road, rose colored glasses all the time. Um, I'm pretty pessimistic uh, when it comes to business and I might overestimate my own abilities at times. And I think that that failure, letting down a bunch of people who invested with me, even though, you know, most people are gonna get their money back in whole. Um, so I guess an investment where you don't lose money isn't a, isn't a loss, um, but I, I feel that it's emotionally trying on me. It's a big loss for me is, you know, if I'm going to take a position where I'm taking other people's money, um, I think a big part of the thing I talk, I'm going to talk to them about is um, the risk factors. Uh, you know, so Jeff Bezos. Hi there, who are you? I'm Jeff Bezos. And what, are your, what is your claim to fame? <laughs> I'm the founder of Amazon.com. When he raised money from people, I think he said he had a 70% chance of failure when he took money from his parents and from other people to start Amazon. And I think I wanna have that conversation with people in investments and things that I'm doing um, if they're not professional investors, in which case, you know, hopefully they know the risk. So that failure is not my favorite failure. It's, it's my least favorite, but um, I think that the pain that that has caused me has really allowed me to take a step back when I make future investments and uh, when I bring on future business partners and things like that. So question number two is, 
what are some bad recommendations that you hear in your professional area of expertise? Okay, I think this is pretty simple for me. I can't break it all the way down on a granular level to say that this one thing is something I hear over and over and over and it's bad advice, but I think in general, people have a tendency to listen to people close to them and not people who are experts. So uh, people who have a high believability factor, which means they've been there, they've done it, uh, are people that really you should listen to. You shouldn't listen to the people closest to you. There's more people taking your advice about money from their family and friends who don't have any money uh, than they're taking from people who have been very successful in making and accumulating a lot of money. Uh, the same thing holds true for business. If you have a group of, uh, I mean, I was in entrepreneurs organization for four or five years and I would say in my chapter there were maybe it was a bigger chapter, 120 businesses all doing over a million a year in revenue. and. I think that, you know, 15 or, or 20%, sorry about that, of those businesses were really kick-ass $20 million plus businesses or million net revenue type businesses. And I think that people in there got into this group think mentality where they weighted everyone's opinion equally. And I think that the opinion of those people who have a much bigger business or a much more profitable business needs to be weighted far heavier. So I would say that the bad advice I hear in business, investing, real estate, uh, and life is not taking advice from those people who've been successful. Now, some people will say, hey, you know, there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of football coaches who didn't play football and they're amazing. And there's plenty of, you know, people who, whatever, who don't have an MBA, but they're great at running a business. And, and all that's true. I'm just saying that those people who coach football that never played football, um, they've been around football their whole lives. They coached high school football. They uh, were a water boy. They then worked their way up to a small college program where they were a special teams assistant and then they became a defensive uh, you know, coordinator and then they were the receivers coach and then they worked their way up somehow to a full-time job at a small college school and they had some success. And after the success, they worked their way up and worked their way up and worked their way up. And next thing you know, they're in the NFL and you're like, how's this guy who, who never even played football a college coach? Like, how can he believe, be believable? But it's because he put in 20 hours or 20 years, 10,000 hours of expertise to get that expertise, to get that skill. So I think the biggest thing is follow people who've been successful first. And if you find somebody, and it's rare, who's been able to coach other people into an area of success, on multiple occasions, you can follow them. But don't just take the advice of people who are around you, who are closest to you. That's the worst advice I hear by far. All right, the next question. So this is question one, two, three. Question three is, if you had a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, metaphorically speaking, you're getting the message out to millions or billions of people, what would it say and why? So I'll hammer that out in a couple questions. So I would say the number one, quote or little saying that I live by is do better um, for sure. And it's a guy who used to work for me, Sam Benham, who, you know, occasionally watches some of my Instagram and YouTube stuff and him or Mike Durando, who I own some real estate with both of those guys. Um, we have some deals together. Uh, well, here's, here's your shout out. But um, he got in trouble at one of his jobs because he was a bartender and the waiters would screw drink orders up all the time and there would be complicated drink margaritas and mojitos and things and he would have to make them and they would screw them up or forget to put them in and then they would tell him last minute like, hey, can you really rush these margaritas? And to make a margarita correctly takes a few minutes. And you know, he would look at him and say, you know, do better. And some people would be like, well, the guy's a dick and Sam is a dick, but he was right. They should have written the order down as opposed to memorizing. Every time they go to the bar, or as soon as they take a drink order, they should have gone straight to Sam and said, here's the four drinks I need and written them down or something so that their process would have allowed them, freed them from making mistakes. So he was right when he said, do better. That's actually one of my uh, real estate company's core values is do better. And I think that that is a principle that I live by. Now, would I put that on a billboard? Uh, if I actually had a billboard on the freeway, I would probably, be, especially because I live in Puerto Rico and I have so many bad drivers here, I would probably say that the left lane is for passing and people who are driving at a decent speed. So if you're driving slow, move over to the right. If you're not passing somebody, move over to the right. Um, that's kind of a joke, but I actually thought about taking out a billboard that said that and then putting sponsored by 
James Charles Payne, and I think I would get enough uh, appreciation mail that the entire island would be happy with me, at least anyone who knew how to drive. But I think that in general, do better is probably number one. If I had a billboard that I could get the message out to people, I think that I would tell people that they need to get rid of their victim mentality. I don't know exactly what words I would use to express that, but people need to lose, if they're in the middle class and they wanna be wealthy, they need to lose their middle class mindset. You know, that's Grant Cardone. If they are poor and they want to become well off, maybe not rich, but they wanna become well off, they need to lose their poor mindset. If they are struggling in business, they need to surround themselves with business people and business books and lose their current loser victim mindset. And they need to take on the mindset of somebody who can't be beat. And I think that that is absolutely the most important and fundamental change that society could make to, for individuals to better themselves and for the whole group in the entire world to better themselves is drop your victim mentality. Don't be a victim. Don't surrender to defeat. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in. Never, never, never. All right, so the fourth question is, what is the best or most worthwhile investment you've ever made? Uh, could be an investment in money, time, energy, etc. Okay, so I think the best investment I've ever made is my continual search and hunt for knowledge. I think that reading has been absolutely the best investment I've made in time, energy, and everything because more than anything, it's changed my mindset from somebody who sees things in a small way to somebody who sees things at a much more macro level. And it's changed my health. I mean, I've read books that inspire me to get back on a workout program or get back on a diet and think about the things that I eat. Um, so from a health standpoint, from a mindset standpoint, from a self-esteem standpoint, from friendship, from a business standpoint, I think books have really been the biggest investment of time that I've given in my life that has made the greatest impact by far. I don't even think it's close now. Uh, at first I was thinking a little bit like co some conferences that I've been to, um, which I think are really valuable. But I think overall, it's been books. I, I don't really even think it's been close. And a lot of people come to me and they say, you know, hey, why aren't you reading, you know, Medium articles? And, and why aren't you on Reddit uh, heavily, reading heavily on Reddit articles? And the thing about books that I've always maintained, e including over, and print magazines are getting better. Uh, they're not there yet, and I don't know if they ever will, but is the amount of time somebody puts into a book is typically years. So if somebody's willing to put years and years of thought and careful thought into each word and each paragraph and stamp their name on it, something that can never be edited or revised easily, uh, then that's something that I wanna read. That's something that's gonna be hopefully worthwhile if they took the time and energy to put it out. Now, blog post, I mean, you know, I write for Inc. Uh, Inc. Magazine and they're great, but the reality is is that I've gotta put out a post every week and are some of my posts better than others? Yeah. Like if I have to put out, you know, 500 words a week, sometimes it's gonna be shitty. Uh, and now some people might get value out of it. I hope people get value out of, I hope some people get some value out of every article I put out. But in my opinion, some articles are much better than the others. And if, you know, there's some other news outlets where you have to put out, some guys on staff are putting out 500 words a day. 99% of that's probably shit. So the time and energy it takes to put together a book, especially if that book is well received, even in a micro or niche community, um, that's where I would spend my time. Greatest investment, read books. Absolutely read books. The next question is, I believe it's question five, is what is an unusual habit or an absurd thing that you love? I love winning. I love figuring out how I can get the most productivity out of my time. I don't like working 12 or 14 hours a day, even though that's what I've decided to do this year. You know what? One thing that is very weird that I've noticed about myself, and it's been like this since as long as I can remember, is sometimes when I'm on a long drive, I'll be listening to a podcast or I'll be listening to an audiobook, and something will click with me, and I'll turn the audiobook off, and I will talk to myself out loud for hours about how the future could go if I were able to implement that perfectly. So if it, if it was like an idea, like, hey, what if I'm reading a book right now, Killing Marketing, what if your marketing department actually wasn't an expense, but it was a revenue generator? What if you're able to actually sell advertising 
from your marketing department because your marketing was so good and you got all your marketing for free. And I thought about that and I turned the book off and I was, had a two hour drive yesterday and I think for an hour I talked to myself about what that would look like, how it could go in a perfect world. And a lot of people like really believe in the power of visualization over and over and over, but if you're on a two hour car ride, I think it's probably twice as powerful to not just visualize how a perfect future will look, but to talk it out, out loud. <laughs> like, even if there's nobody else there. I don't think it's absurd, I think it's super weird that I do that, but maybe it's part of the reason uh, that I'm uniquely successful in a few things that I do. I don't know. Kind of weird. Hey, look, thank you so much for asking those questions uh, on Instagram, on DM. Um, I know I don't get to everyone and everything, and the comments are kind of out of control at this point sometimes. But um, that question came from Davry, uh, D-A-V-R-Y Instagram handle. So thanks for those questions. Thanks for giving me the inspiration to shoot this YouTube video. Uh, maybe we'll throw it on IG and make an IG video as well. And keep the questions coming more than happy to answer them uh subscribe to my youtube channel if you're not already on there uh i believe it's uh you know just search james charles Payne on youtube and you'll find me for sure um super stoked that i can answer those some of those made me think a little bit and i think they would be good questions to ask yourself and uh for inspiration if you're not asking people that you think are successful or that are smart or that are good at something uh questions about why they're successful, why they do what they do about their habits, then you're really losing out. So thanks for the question and guys have a killer week. All right, later.